Thank you for joining this ministry of Into Christ 10,000. I'm your host, Tony Floor, and it's here where we learn the power and the freedom of discovering who we are in Christ. Today we're going to get back into Galatians. Uh, we are in chapter 5, verse 13. So we're going to pick up where we left off last week. So if you didn't get a chance to catch last week's episode, uh, by all means, check us out on our website, intochrist.org. You'll see some of the previously recorded episodes of Into Christ 10,000. So today I want to start out by giving you a little bit about who I am, where I came from, something that's going on that's going to tie into the message that we're going to talk about today. Because we've been talking a lot about going backwards, backwards into self, backwards into the law, backwards into where we came from before Christ. And we've been talking a lot about faith and living in Christ. So I'm, I was wanting to give you a little bit about who we are, why we do the things that we do. Where did my call come from? So my son was murdered about five months ago. On April 15, 2019, he was fatally shot. He lived for three more days fighting for his life. I prayed for him. We had the world praying for him through the Into Christ Facebook page. But my son didn't make it past his injuries. You see, my son was in a place outside of God's protection. He was doing things and in an area where he should not have been and doing the things that he should not have been. But he was 19. He was invincible. Like most 19-year-olds, they think that they're invincible that nothing bad's going to happen from their actions. They don't have the maturity yet to do things. And my son was shot doing things that he thought he would not be able to, to overcome. So after my son's death and his passing, I was angry. I had a spirit of anger and of revenge and a vigilante revenge. You see, I'm ex-Army. I wanted to, to go back to my basic training days of the military. I wanted to go back into the former self of who Tony was. And I, I wanted to take life. I wanted to sit down and camo up and not be seen. And I wanted to snuff out the life of the individuals that took my only child, my only son, who prevented me from ever having grandchildren and from my name ending at my death. And I wanted that revenge so badly that I wanted justified that I could take life because of that. And as I was crying out to God with my heart and crying out with what I wanted to do, I remember telling God, I just want to shoot people that are dealing drugs. I want to shoot people that are there in gangs. I want to shoot people there that are up to no good. Let me just take their life because they're not worth it. They're not worth being here among us. All they're going to do is continue to take innocent lives, take children and women, take men away from their families. And I poured my heart out to God. And as I cried out to God, for him to justify my actions and my desires. He spoke to me. And he said to me, Tony, the devil comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Instead of taking life, I want you to go to the devil's camp. And I want you to bring back 10,000 of Satan's children and bring them into Christ and his salvation. So the message and the vision and the goal of Into Christ 10,000, and that's where the 10,000 comes from, because rather than taking one life, instead I'm going to preach the gospel, I'm going to tell people about God, and I'm coming after Satan, I'm coming after you because you took my son, and God has given me a mission and a vision to stand boldly before the world 
before the foundations of the world, before Satan himself, and recorded in this day in heaven and hell, that the vision of this group, and many members are catching on to this vision, we're going after the 10,000. We're going to bring 10,000 to Christ. And when we bring the first 10,000, we're going to bring another 10,000. And another 10,000. And another 10,000 to Christ until there's no more breath in my lungs. The one message that I would have for Satan is you messed with the wrong dad. And we're going to together bring 10,000 to Christ. Now, how am I going to tie this into what we're talking about here? Because you saw Tony in the flesh. You saw Tony leaning backwards into his former training. But you see Tony here every week speaking of spiritual things, teaching you how to walk in God and how to walk in faith and how to walk in grace. But yet I had a moment where I no longer wanted to do that. I had a season there where I wanted to do the opposite of what my spirit wants me to do. And we're going to study that in the Word today. We're going to study that to see what does God have to say about that. And if you've ever been in this type of environment or this type of situation, you know exactly what I'm talking about, about the anger. Or if you're a former drug addict and you can go, yes, I know about that. I know it because I want to go back sometimes. I, I want to taste it again. I want to feel that high in my life. You can look back and you can grab onto Scripture. And you can hold for dear life, like we talked about last time, standing fast, standing hard, standing on the Word, taking hold of the Word. I want to give you some words today. Some words that God is presenting to you. I'm not the one presenting this because I can step back into the flesh. But I choose not to. I choose to live by faith rather than through sinful desire. So let's go to God in prayer and let's talk about the Word of God and how it's going to change and how that effect looks in our lives. So you're going to want to catch this episode and the next episode because this is still going to apply for the next probably couple of episodes. So make sure you catch us here on Into Christ 10,000 because this is going to be a releasing of your spirit, your sinful nature, and a releasing of that and grabbing onto the Spirit of God and bringing it in and breathing in a freshness, a renewing Spirit of God into your lives because it certainly breathed a refreshing spirit into my life, a spirit that gave me peace that passes all understanding. Why am I able only five months later to stand here or sit here in front of you and proclaim the goodness of God when my son lies in a grave? Because I know the goodness of God and I know the evilness of sin and I know what sin produces is death and I know that Jesus produces life. Let us pray. Father God, as we go through your word today, Lord, I pray that you would bring power and inspiration from the Holy Spirit to not only to me, but to those that are hearing, that they may hear your word, that they may get revelation knowledge of your word, that they may be able to come to you boldly before your throne in the name of Jesus and lay down those sinful desires, lay down those things that easily beset them and take them off of their course. But Father, do a good work today. Do a good work in me. Do a good work in the hearers of your word. Open up their heart and take away the hardness of the heart. Take away the evilness and the sin that lies with inside of them and replace it with Jesus. Allow there only to be room in our heart and in ourselves and in our very essence for Jesus that we may say and do only those things that are for the building of your kingdom. Allow us all to be disciples of Jesus where we go out and look for those that need you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so I'm going to be reading out of three different translations for those that want to follow me. Uh, I am in Galatians chapter 5. We're starting in verse 13. I read out of over here my Dakes King James Bible. I read out of here the 
uh, New Living Translation, NLT, and over here I've got the Passion. Uh, the Passion is really written more out of the Aramaic language, where these two are written more out of the Greek language. So uh, all three excellent versions. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion. Occasion. I really want you to pick up on that word occasion because it's occasions that will pull us away from the gospel of peace that we already know. It's the occasions, occasions that will take us backwards in time. And it says, for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Over here in the Passion, verse 13, and it says, Beloved ones, God has called us unto live a life of freedom, to live a life of freedom in the Holy Spirit. But don't view this wonderful freedom as an opportunity, not an occasion, not an opportunity, to set up a base of operations in the natural realms. So we don't want to set up a, a base camp. We don't want to camp out back into our sinful natures. We always want to be pressing ahead, pressing on into the high calling of God into our lives. And it says, to set up a base of operation in the natural realms. Freedom means that we become so completely free of, of what? Of self-indulgence. That we become servants of one another, expressing love in all we do. So we don't want to find an occasion. We definitely don't want to set up a base camp in it. We definitely, definitely don't want to use it to satisfy our sinful nature. We always want to be moving forward with God. We always want to be taking that next step with God. We always want to make sure that we're not reverting back to self-righteousness, but that we were moving ahead in faith in faith in Jesus, in faith in what He has done for us. And always pointing back to that moment at the cross when we were transformed and we were reborn under God, when we were reborn under what Jesus did for us, when we were reborn underneath that sacrifice, that precious blood that took our sin and cast it away, and we came out clean. We didn't deserve it, but yet Jesus died for us. He looked ahead into the future. He saw you sitting there right then and there, and he said, it's through this blood that you're going to be redeemed. It's through this blood, this salvation, that I'm going to provide to you a final sacrifice for your sins, a final way for you to be redeemed. I'm going to bridge that gap between the sinful nature and your spirit, and I'm going to lay down my life that you may find the freedom in it. That you may find the freedom from sin. We really need to grab a hold of that because we definitely don't want to be setting up occasions or even a base camp for our sinful desires. It says, For the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. But you are always biting and devouring one another. Watch out. Beware of destroying one another. Over here in the Passion, let's see, that was verse 14. It says, For love completes the laws of God. All of the law can be summarized in one grand statement. Demonstrate love to your neighbor, even as you care for and love yourself. But if you continue to criticize and come against each other over minor issues, you're acting like wild beasts trying to destroy one another. For all have the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you are not consumed one of another. So I'm reminded of different denominations. This is a non-denominational Bible study here. I'm demand, reminded of different denominations who wanted to spill out doctrine and who want to debate doctrine and who want to debate theology. And yet, when we're out in public and we're talking about it, I'm, I'm reminded of a time when I was in Bible college and I went to a grocery store and I saw a man and I began to spill out the gospel to him and he said, yes, I know, I belong to X denomination. 
what do you think about this? And I would give him my, my thoughts on this. And I would ask him, what's, my thought? what's your thought on this? And he would tell me his thoughts on that. And then it dawned on me, we're in the middle of a grocery store in the frozen food section, and we're discussing doctrine, and we're discussing Scripture. But yet all of those around us don't understand what we're talking about because we're, we're fighting each other. We're fighting one another. We are the same body but different members. We each have our place and where the Word takes us. We each have our own view of the gospel. We have each worked out our own gospel with fear and with trembling. And I remember telling the guy, it's not about your doctrine or mine. What matters the most is how we began this journey. How did we begin to understand who we are in Christ? We are both saved by the blood of Jesus. We are both called by the blood of Jesus. We are both under grace through faith in Jesus. Let us talk about that in open public. Let us continue to build one another and to praise one another and to be thankful for one another that our missions are combined for the building of His kingdom, for bringing in people to understand who He is. You complete me and I complete you. We complete the message of Jesus. It's not through our differences. It's through our likeness. It's through grace. It's through that gift of salvation that God gave us. Let us share that upon one another and let us share that in our testimony to the world as we stand out here in the world. But when we continue to fight and to bicker and to talk about things and just devour one another, we have to realize that we have now fallen from grace. We have fallen from our faith and we are now trapped in sin because we did not agree in the Spirit, because those around us, we are confusing. Verse 16, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you who are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. Over here in the Passion, it says, As you yield freely and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, you will abandon the great cravings of your self-life. You're going to abandon the, the cravings of your former life. You're going to abandon the cravings of your sinful desires. For self-life craves the things that offend the Holy Spirit and hinder Him from living free within you. So there's a reason that we want to stop this. There's a reason that we want to move forward with Christ. Because when we step back into our sinful desire, when we step back away from who we are becoming in Christ, it leads the Holy Spirit to lead. It allows other spirits to come in and fill that void where Jesus and the Holy Spirit have now departed because they cannot be even part of sin. So when we step backwards, when we put that train in reverse and we asphyxiate ourselves back into sin, we leave the Holy Spirit. And we start walking according to the flesh and not according to the Spirit. We start walking in ways that are not pleasing to God. And we start pleasing the self and we start building the self up and we start feeding the self. And before you know it, you're totally lost because you have built up self so much and you have starved and asphyxiated the Spirit life side of you. So if you're catching yourself today and you're going, whoa, he's talking to me, it's time to rebuild that spirit life back up. It's time to jump back into the Word. It's time to get the Word back into the Spirit. And it's time to turn again and face Jesus and say, I stepped away. Forgive me, Lord. I'm here today because you love me. And I received that free gift of grace again. It says here, but if you continue to criticize and come each other over minor issues, 
You're acting like wild beasts trying to destroy one another. I don't want to be a wild beast anymore, Lord. I want to be saved and set free. I want to be full of grace and wisdom. I want to have your love. I want to have the fruits of the Spirit. I don't want to have the lusts of the flesh. Help me, Lord, to be an overcomer, that I may overcome these temptations, that I won't be tempted, but that when the temptation comes to me, I can cast it out by swinging the sword of the Spirit, that I can hide behind the shield of faith, and I can don my helmet of salvation, and I can walk according to having my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. As I look into your word and as I study your word and as I increase my prayer time and my prayer life with you, Lord, bless it. Lord, bring in things into remembrance, into my mind, that I can become an overcomer of this world and this life, and that I can live freely without sin and freely in your grace and freely in you, and you freely in me. I don't like stepping out into the world. I know what it does to me. I know that what, it, what sin does. Lord, I pray that you would just guide me. I pray that you will deliver me from self. Allows to show me how to get self out of the way and self focused strictly on you. Lord, give me spiritual blinders that I may not see the world, but I may see your glory, that I may seek after you and that I would find you, that I would hold on to you with both arms and both hands and grab on to you and hold on to you, Lord. Hold on to your word to see what your word has to say to me. Who am I, Lord? Who am I in you? Because I know that self me, self me wants, wants vigilante revenge. It wants vengeance upon those that have wronged me. It wants vengeance on those that took life from me. It wants vengeance on those that have offered me temptation. It wants vengeance. And with vengeance comes sin. And with sin comes death. Deliver me, O Lord, from that because that is... That is binding in my spirit, that spirit of anger where I just want to pound on life and pound on, on something to take away this. But Lord, I have lost focus and I have looked over here and I have looked at self and I said, self, this is what you should do to gratify your anger. You should go ahead and try drugs again. You should go ahead and taste of the forbidden fruits in your life because it's going to make you feel good. It's the same lie that the devil used on Eve, and it's the same temptation. It's just covered in something fresh for you for today. Take away that spirit, Lord, and allow me to turn back to you and to grab onto you, because I love you, and I love people, and I love sharing your word. I hope that you get something out of this message because that was my final prayer for you. That was my final hope and my heart's desire for you to come into that type of peace. That type of freedom where God raises you above your, your current status, your current situations, and He looks at you and He says, you're my child. Accept the free grace that I have given you and come unto me, all you that are heavily burdened. Bring your burdens to God and give them to Him that you may know peace, that you may know grace, and that you may know salvation and redemption because it's in Jesus that we are sealed in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for joining me on this powerful episode of Into Christ 10,000. Catch me next week, same time, same place. 
right here on Into Christ 10,000. And together, we'll discover who we are in Christ. Good night. I am a wild beast for God. This production of Into Christ 10,000 is made possible by the financial gifts from viewers like you. Thank you.